Right, well today's mission, or well, part of today's mission, is to get this chassis rail from there to there so that we can finish off the uh, prep work on it and then we're going to move the engine from there to there. <coughs> so a bit to do, let's see how we go on. Great stuff, so we've done the move, chassis was over there, it's now here, engine's moved about. We had a sweep up, which is great, that saved us some uh, ankle lake. Um, most of the chassis is cleaned up, we've still got these bits to do here. This is the front end of the chassis, uh, top of the chassis here. If you look there, it's got a slight cut out in it, along there and up, and that'll be around the uh, throttle linkage. Uh, you can see also it's been flame cut. Does make you wonder whether Foden's dropped the engine and the chassis when a bloke with 20 B and H in his top right hand pocket said. Yeah, we'd better just nick that with tackle, haven't we? Because that's what we'd have done at Longsons. We've just got to finish that front end off. She's done on the other side. This is where the engine mount goes, by the way. Um, these are where the fuel hoses come through. I believe that one's the, uh, the return, that one's the feed. Grand. Cummings, brilliant. All right, let's crack on. Right, so we're just getting set up to finish cleaning this chassis off. The door's open because uh, we're going to create some dust, uh, grown up dust in fact. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to blow it over everybody's cars. So, I'm cleaning my screen up. The mast had a good clean because we're going to need him. I'm obviously going to need some gloves. We'll get rid of this uh, stuff and then we'll get on with it. Right, that's gone reasonably well. Got all the uh, heavy deposits of rust off. Oh. Yeah, that feels better as well. We were using the uh, the wheel of death on the angle grinder. Always try and buy decent quality ones of them. They do explode, I've had them explode. So make sure you're wearing your, your face shield rather than a pair of safety specs. We're gonna move on to this aluminium oxide um, abrasive wheel. These are great. But we're in really good shape here so I'm going to swap this over. Okay so look inside the chassis really tells us a lot about the truck. This is uh, the front rear spring hanger so it's the second axle and that's where the front hanger fits. This is the inside there's obviously a cross member goes here as well and you can see the outline of that. These two bolts here and these three here would go into these three here would go into the um, uh, spring angle which would be mounted outside of course. We're going to try and take this paint off and this paint off here with the abrasive aluminium oxide disc. Um, if you move forward, further forward to the front you see where it hasn't been able to be painted quite as well with the engine in place we've still got the factory finish. We've got an accumulation here of standing water, um, probably because we've just got masses and masses of dirty wet grease, and this is around the engine mounting as well. So this is this is the rear of engine mounting for the near side, and you can see that you know oil and crap has just gathered there over the years. Probably hasn't been able to run off. It's had a lift there or something that's been created by the oil and grease, and it's just rotted away. Um, Further forward, which is not so bad, is she? You know, a little bit there that we might just have to nip with needle gum. And a bit more evidence of that flame cut in there. You know, I dare say, uh, well, we shan't be taking that off. Um, hopefully, somebody's looking at that in 20 years' time, rubbing the finger on it and thinking they know what that is. And then back here, this is where the back cross member goes, this section here. Um, again, these two bolts are for the rear rear spring hanger, so second axle rear spring hanger. And you can see here we've got that build up, so that's going to get some needle gun as well. 
just to, to get it off. So, yeah, but all in all, that's in really good shape. Well, uh, yeah, we'll have that uh, cleaned up and cut and stitched up and painted and what have you before you know it. When it comes to reassembly, if we don't seem to do something about that heavy corrosion in the, this back end from the uh, cross member, that's going to give us some real complications. The easiest way of getting rid of it is going to be with the uh, needle gun and it's a good opportunity to make some noise so why wouldn't you do it? There we go, let's have a go at it. I did that spot a bit earlier on, you can see she's grand, she's gone. And then, you remember we got it in there, and that's just with the needle and it's taking it right back. So when we come put the uh, cross member in, you know, it should be absolutely spot on that. We're not going to be fighting anything, it should keep you straight in. We'll finish that off with grinder. Great stuff, so we've got us oxide disc on. Uh, we're going to just finish this off now. Again, it throws up a load of crap, so we need some on just protecting those lungs. Let's go for it. Right, great stuff. Um, that's come up pretty well. Uh, I'll come and get you and uh, let you have a closer look. So, um, this is where we had all that gummed up paint. Um, so I was keen to get that uh, gone. Uh, not quite sure what's gone off there. It looks like it's had some welding or something, but I don't know. Anyway, um, we're down now to the uh, factory undercoat here. I've worked with this before, so I'm happy enough with that. The X-Prime will, will live with that. We've got that out of there. It's a really good surface to work off now. This is the area where the cross member goes. Um, so that should fit in lovely, that one. And this is that backspring gang where we had the needle gunning earlier on. So we've needle gunned it back. It's had the aluminium oxide disc. Um, that's pretty good. Probably should have referenced this earlier on, but this undulation is caused by the cross member being in here and then rust growing between the flitches. It was a real struggle to get these cross members out, they were absolutely solid. That'll, that'll clean up and paint up really well. That pleased with that. Now, this chassis is a day cab vehicle, and the day cab Foden S80 was a 10 foot 3 wheelbase. Um, when they had a sleeper fitted, in this case a Jennings sleeper, they were 11 foot 3 wheelbase. So um, it seems stupid to build this as a 10 foot 3 when we're in a perfect place now to build it as an 11 foot 3, plus they look daft at 10 foot 3 with a sleeper cap. So we're going to uh, clean this up, mark it up, with uh, taking some dimensions before we stripped it, so we sort of know where we're going with that, where we can land our cup, because obviously you've got a lot of holes, you've got spring anger holes, cross member holes, gearbox member holes, etc, etc. So where we need to land it is quite specific, and we're going to land it here, and the reason for that is it's in between the spring anger cross member and the gearbox cross member and we're going to put in that one foot 300 mil call it what you will um which will enable us to get the correct 11 foot three wheelbase so our datum line is going to be this second axle front spring anger and the foremost mounting hole of that second axle front spring anger we know that the line we want is 440mm from the centre of that hole on the spring anger to 
uh, the cut line and then we also know that from the cut line the rearmost holes that mount the gearbox cross member are 395 mil so we're going to mark these up and drop our lines in and then we're going to cut it up which is the best bit right that's given us a pretty good surface we just need to make sure we get some uh, decent tape stuck to it I know everybody's got their own way of doing this and that's fine this is just the way I do it I haven't done hundreds of chassis cutting them and stretching them but I've certainly done teams of them probably 20 odd in fact the other big problem we've got with the chassis of course is the amount of rippling we've got on it so that's why we've got the two datum lines as well so she's nice and square at that one and she's nice and square at that one too <coughs> this is the critical one this is where it's really got to stick because we're going to be dropping the grinder through it to you so I really need this to do your job so we're going to get a bit of warmth into that and dry some of the crap out of it guys now we want these guns get them and that really does make all the difference when you're sticking that tape on and expecting it to stick So what we're doing is a straight joint, we're going to do a couple of fillet welds through it, we're going to weld both sides, we've got a flitch going in it, and some of the flitch will also be bolted in. This will never, ever, ever break. Grand. See what this gives us. bang on at 440. Yeah. So all we've got to do now is cut that top bit. I'm just going to re-secure re the work mate so it's supporting both sides of the way. <coughs> what I was saying, that's cut really well now. Uh, it's cut straight through it. The tape is stuck in place and that's due to degreasing, warming up the metal and putting it on properly. Right, with a bit of a gap here, important we take that out because we don't want it to sag when we cut it, trap the disc or do some damage or distort the line. That's about right. Quite happy to cut at that. I'm gonna <clears throat> always like to go through the motions with the equipment as well because I don't want to be stopping halfway through to adjust my extension lead or unravel my wire. You know, we're, we're there or thereabouts. This is the important cut now. I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that disc is a bit borderline, but let's run it out. It would have been nice to have that trestle a bit further back, but somebody put an axle in the way. Give it a quick check now. A bit later, but it's wrong though, isn't it? It's bang on 440 that. And then this one, it's just in between 439 and 440. Right, there's the near side chassis. We've got it uh, cut, tidied up, stacked up nice and neat. Uh, I'm waiting for my mate Richard to uh, organise a trip to Lincolnshire to pick up 
another lump of S80 chassis that we've identified over there. Still loads to get on with here. Uh, the air cleaner, we might have seen that already. Snow's coming down again. Yeah, so ultimately that'll do us for now. So we'll be looking at this shortly uh, and put it to the 11 foot 3 wheelbase. Uh, so hopefully the next time we get this out it'll be to uh, weld the bits in and, and flitch it out and, and do something a bit more interesting than we've been doing recently. Great.